Now I want to make sure that you're not making the same mistakes that a lot of folks make every time, every year when they're creating food plots on their land and expecting to hunt those and having a great hunt without ruining their land. Because folks, that's a big risk. If you overhunt your food plots, if you hunt the wrong food plots, if you spook deer off your food plots, you're gonna destroy not only that food plot for any daylight movement, and that's drastic. That happens after the first sit, the second sit, and by the third or fourth sit, you're not seeing any deer during daylight, but it can destroy your entire property. Especially when you're talking 30, 40, 50 acres where it have, you have that ripple effect of several hundred yards where you spook deer off a food plot, they're not coming in during the daylight. Well, that means they're probably not staying 200 yards away, even does and fawns, because they're not getting there during the daylight. They wanna go somewhere else and feed because that's their third and most important feeding of the day out of five. They feed twice in their bedding areas, say mid-morning, mid-afternoon, and then in the afternoon, evening, they're on your food plots, they're on that food source where they wanna be, whether it's your property or someone else's, and they're hitting that food source, and then they're going somewhere else to feed two times at night. You don't want to have deer on your property at night feeding as the general rule, because then those deer aren't anywhere near your land during the daylight hour. So it's very important. A lot of times people are hunting a food plot the size that I have behind me. You know, you can't see, this is a big ag field, but they're hunting a food plot like this, they're drawing a lot of deer here, and they're spooking them off. Now we have a lot of food plots. We've gone over that out of the 12 food plots that I have in Minnesota, in Wisconsin, totaling about 16 acres. There's only three that we actually hunt with a bow and we hunt close. Now we hunt a lot of them from a distance with a gun, all of them. We can hunt all of them, they're very important. They're very critical to the movement, but we can't spook those deer. We have to allow those food plots. They become daylight food plots, the risk is too great. So I wanna show you some steps that I'm taking to make sure, and that you should, to make sure that you're establishing a good hunting plot, an actual hunting plot, an actual kill plot for this season. And really the planning starts now. You can't make these plans starting in August, September, put these in and build a hunt around it, put tree stands out and blinds at that point. You need to really start in the spring. We're right in mid-April right now, so it's a great time to do so. Now I'm gonna talk about access first. You know, we're accessing through this area and you can see this switchgrass we already have planted. This switchgrass will be as high as the side-by-side. -side. Just for reference, it'll be right up here by this fall probably by about August, it'll be about this high. So we're gonna have an area where we can sneak through and we're not spooking deer out in the fields. Now we're fortunate here out in the ag fields, they have a pretty good slope. So if those deer are 60, 70 yards away in a lot of our area because it's sloping down to the property, then we can't see them when we're coming in. So that's that's important because we're using the hillside as a, as a type of screen. But the switchgrass is critical. Now I'll go back down this way so you, Dylan can show all the way to the power lines, but you can see from here down, I've brush hogged this, I've frost seeded switchgrass, I've sprayed simazine, I'm going to hit this with 240 and Roundup, and then I'll mow as needed to make sure the switchgrass comes in really nice. This area was already mowed of weeds last year a couple times. So this switchgrass strip will be from the edge of the field all the way down to here this year. So that by next year, when I have a trail through here that is literally right here, I'm gonna have 12 to 16 feet of switchgrass on either side of me it allows me to come in here like a tunnel back and forth and not spook the deer on either side. So that's critical. You can't move around your property, through your property without spooking deer. Screening is so critical. I talked about that in PowerPoint presentations back in the late 90s, early 2000s when I give habitat talks, early 2000s. Right, have a projector, transparency, and talk about that you have to screen everything. That was critical. Whether it was bedding areas, food sources, access, water holes, deer have to be hidden from each other. This is that first line of defense so that we can get on and off the property without spooking deer. Now the next line is we're using natural habitat. So you can see how thick these briars are. You can see our redneck blind right there. We're using 30 feet of switchgrass. Then we're using a big, blank, big, big wide swath of these briars here, very thick. So that when we sneak in here, we'll clean this off right here pretty easy. We'll brush hog this a couple more times. These sticks will turn to just about nothing. We'll have this nice and clean. We'll have our access trail coming right in. Because it's down to the ground, we won't leave any scent in and out. That's very critical. So screening, the access route, natural lay of the land and habitat, and then we're not gonna leave scent in and out. Now we have this big open area right here between here and the blind. Another spot for switchgrass. It's another area that we don't need food because we're gonna get deer into our, down, our downwind area. So we need a spot where we can get into, and once we're here, we're obviously not blowing our scent towards the food plot. So we need an area that we can get in and just look at a window of movement 
inside the food plot. A window of movement, meaning I don't want this to be the stopping point. So we have screening, we screened our access, we have quiet approach, we have a scent-free location where we can blow our scent to the outside of the food, and then we're watching that window of movement. What I mean by this is this can't be big enough that it's holding deer here for an hour at a time, hour and a half. So this has to be to the outside of the movement as far as it relates to whether it's in between big food sources, it's in between a bedding area and a big food source, but it has to be on the way to something else. So that's very critical too. See, we have a pretty big food plot over there across the draw. That food plot's more like an acre. This one right here is about a third of an acre. This one's a pass-through. That's one where they hold. We have a big cornfield about 500 yards from there that's an acre. We have another acre and a half, acre and three-quarter food plot on the other side of that. So on the other side of the draw, if you see the power lines back there, we have about a four-acre plot. So again, this is just off to the corner. It's a true hunting plot. It's a pass-through on the way to other food sources. So bucks can cruise through here during the rut. We added a red cedar licking branch tree down there. We have a mock scrape. Lots of footage of deer coming in and out right there. This will all be switchgrass right here. It's planted simazine. And then we have a very tunneled access where we can get in and out of this blind without spooking deer. So access is good where we blow our scent is good. But then look at the size of the plot. I wanna make sure that on a hunting plot that I can actually shoot at least at a minimum 50% of the food plot to two thirds and even three quarters of the food plot, sometimes 100%. In this case, we're not putting food right back here. You see, this is where we had our food last year at the furthest, right up along this line. And then this is all switchgrass because again, I want a pretty wide swath where I can hunt without deer getting downwind to me. And then we have this movement right here. We have a stopping point, which is our licking branch. Most of the time we have some type of tree around that we can use. We didn't here, so we transplanted one over there. Just brought a red cedar, cut it down and put it there. And then this is small enough and to the outside of the movement enough to where deer can just pass through. What does that allow us to do? It allows us to sneak around the property without spooking deer. It allows us to get into the redneck, out of the redneck, while we're hunting in the redneck without spooking deer, whether it's because they're not downwind or we can get in and out. And we could have a deer on the other side of there. They're just passing through. And even if we have to get out, we can sneak out the back, we're completely screened getting in and out and we're not spooking deer. We're, doing, we're taking every precaution to not spook deer in this location. And guess what, when we do that, when we screen off the area, we make this area an even more daylight magnet for cruising mature bucks. They know they're not gonna run into us. They, knew they're rare, they know they're rarely getting spooked here. They don't hear us, they don't see us, and they feel comfortable because this area is completely screened in. I really had the thought this year of making this a little bit larger, but if I did so, I'd ruin the sanctity of it. And with adding to that food plot over here, with adding to that food plot over there, this becomes even more the perfect hunting plot that it was last year. Leo, firefighter from Ann Arbor, Michigan, he won our hunt giveaway last year through our charity event. We have our charity event for Camp Kicking Bear. We, make, we don't make a dime on that. We donate everything to Camp Kicking Bear. Last year, we donated over 21,000 to Camp Kicking Bear. We hope to be to exceed that well above that this year, but that'll be June 11th. We will be selling tickets to that. Look for that coming soon. They're $300 a piece for the Habitat Day. All of that goes to straight to Kicking Bear. We have other ways we raise money that day. And one of those ways is we had that hunt giveaway. Leo shot at Lucky out of this blind and he ended up becoming really lucky because he was right over here and Leo ended up missing Lucky. And I'm not trying to get a dig at Leo. It was a great hunt. They had a great time. He actually shot, shot with Dante uh, filming, with Dylan filming. They had a great hunt. We had a great time with him out there. My buddy Mike Pratt came with him. He's friends with Leo. So we had a really good hunt, a great time all around for a good cause. But it was already a great hunting plot last year. We're making it better. Part of that, I thought about grinding this all out. I could add another quarter acre here, get more food. But guys, sometimes there's so many times we go to a, a client property and they have a food plot that they call a hunting plot and we end up cutting it in half because it's too big. It's too much of a holding plot. You just want to pass through. You just want to window movement. You have to be able to get in and out without spooking deer. And I'll even add one, one other feature in this where we have the redneck. You can see how much that's hidden there from the side. That redneck blind is set down into the gray dogwood pocket. It's very critical. 
we're shooting through a tunnel on the other side from the redneck. It's completely hidden. If we put on its true 10 foot stand that we actually had the material for, that redneck would be lifted over and above the gray dogwood and it would stick out and it makes it so our ambush point is not hidden. So hidden ambush, hidden access, hidden while you're in the blind, looking at a small plot that's complemented by something larger where it's just a window movement and that creates all day movement in this location. We've seen it on the trail cameras. It'd be a great spot. It was a great spot to hunt last year, making it even better this year, making our access even better. And those are the ingredients that it takes to make a great hunting plot. Very, very few plots out there. Only 25% of our plots in Wisconsin and Minnesota are plots that we consider hunting plots where we could actually hunt with a bow. And it's because of lay of land. You know, the three plots in Wisconsin, we can't hunt with a bow. There's no way because if we get in there, we're in a bowl, we'll spook all the deer out and we rely on those food sources all season long to create that movement. And in this case, we can't afford to spook out this plot because that spooks out that one. It affects that big one over there and it affects all the property in between. I hope you're hunting an actual true hunting plot or kill plot this fall because if you're not, the risk is high for not only that plot, but your whole hunt, your herd for the entire season. So if you're hunting a true kill plot, then you're gonna have a great hunt and you have the ability to really enjoy a hunt. And you know, let's face it, most of the time I'm not hunting on a food plot when I do. It's this type of setup. And if you take these ingredients and apply it to your hunt and your food plot, then you're gonna have a great hunt this fall with a very low risk of spooking out the deer herd. And actually, because of how you're accessing, you're not spooking deer, you're not getting deer downwind, you're not leaving a scent trail in and out. You're just watching that window movement. You can hunt a kill plot all season long, get away with a lot of hunts and a lot of enjoyment. That's why there's a redneck there because we expect to enjoy this and a lot of other folks enjoy this spot for years to come. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.